All right, time to do a three-step problem. Similar to the two-step problems, but with another step. So we have a little bit more thinking to do. We have a little bit more planning to do before we jump into the calculations. Again, we're going to start just like we did the two-step problems by looking at what we're given. 250 grams of water. And what it is we're trying to find here. The number of grams of hydrogen fluoride. And we're going to try to figure out how we're going to get from here to here. So we start off with the grams, the 250 grams of water, and we ask ourselves, well, what can we do with 250 grams of water? And the answer is, the only thing we can do is convert to moles of water. And then I kind of jump over here and look at that grams of hydrogen fluoride, and I ask myself, well, what am I going to need in order to find the number of grams of hydrogen fluoride? And the answer to that question is, I'm going to have to know how many moles I've got. As if I have moles of hydrogen fluoride, I convert that to grams. Then I look at what I've got here in the middle. Moles of water, moles of hydrogen fluoride. Do I have a balanced equation that would allow me to go back and forth between the two of those? And by golly, I do. So I can make that conversion. I've got a three-step problem here. So the first step will be going from grams of water to moles of water. The second step will be going from moles of water to moles of hydrogen fluoride using that balanced equation. And my third step will be going from moles of hydrogen fluoride to grams of hydrogen fluoride, a mole mass conversion at the end. So let's get started. First conversion, grams of water to moles of water. To do the mole mass conversion for a compound, I need to know its formula mass. Water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen. There are two hydrogens. Each one has a mass of 1.01, .01, giving me a total mass of 2.02. .02. H2O has one oxygen. Oxygen is 16.00 times 1 is 16.00. Add the two together, the formula mass of water is 18.02 grams. So we can say one mole of water equals 18.02 grams of water. Just like that. Now, we can do our conversion. Always start with what we were given. We were given 250 grams of water to work with. Write that down first. All of these equations, all this math always starts with the given. Times, and then the conversion factor, that fraction that will cancel out the grams of water. It's made from these two numbers and the equivalents that we just put together. We've got grams of water as our given, so we have to put the grams on the bottom. It's all about unit cancellation. We need to get rid of the grams of water and convert it to moles so we can move on. In these types of problems, we can ignore the ones. Our 18.02 is on the bottom, so we'll divide by it. 250 divided by 18.02. This is 13.8. Seven, if I'm using significant figures, I'd round that to 14. And there you have it, first step done. Now time for step two. And in step two, we decided we're gonna convert from moles of water to moles of hydrogen fluoride. To do that, we need the equivalence from the balanced equation. We find water, to two in front of it. So we write two moles of water. Hydrogen fluoride, find it in the balanced equation. There's a four in front of it. So four moles of hydrogen fluoride.
It's a ratio. Mr. Allen, Peacock, and Tyler, you're needed in room 135. Mr. Allen, Peacock, and Tyler. Too bad for them. Well, at this point, you could reduce that to one to two if you want, but why do extra math, especially if you're already struggling and, and, and really focused on how to set this stuff up? Just leave it the way it is. Now, carry this number over as the starting point for your next calculation. So we're starting with the 14 moles of water times, and then our conversion factor. Now, we can't look at moles this time to decide what to put where because they're both moles. This is why I'm always getting on your case when you don't write down the formulas. You've got to write down the unit and the formula. Because in this case, it's the formula we're trying to cancel. It's the water we're trying to cancel. So we've got to put the water on the bottom. And we'll put the hydrogen fluoride on the top. Moles of water cancel out, just like we wanted them to. We're left with moles of hydrogen fluoride, which is where we need to be when this step is done. Now we have numbers on the top and on the bottom. And again, we'll multiply by numbers on the top, we'll divide by numbers on the bottom. So we'll take 14 times 4, and then we'll divide by 2. And that gives us 28. Twenty-eight moles of hydrogen fluoride. Now we are ready to wrap this thing up. We want grams of hydrogen fluoride. We have moles of hydrogen fluoride. We have what we need to do that final conversion. So on to step three. Moles of hydrogen fluoride to grams. And as always, whenever we're doing a mole mass conversion, we need to have a formula mass. There's hydrogen and fluorine in hydrogen fluoride. There's no subscript on the hydrogen, so that's one. Times 1.01. There is no subscript on the fluorine, so that's times one. 19.00 is its mass from the periodic table. Add those up, 20.01 grams. So one mole. Hydrogen fluoride equals 20.01 grams of it. Now we're ready to move on. Get that math rolling. Take the answer from the previous step. 28 moles of hydrogen fluoride times and then the conversion factor. Remember when we make our conversion factor, the numbers come from the equivalents we just made. I have moles of hydrogen fluoride, so I'll put the moles of hydrogen fluoride on the bottom. I'll take the grams and put it on top. Moles cancel. So 28 times 20.01. Again, multiplying because the number that we're interested in is on the top. Ignoring the one again. 560 grams hydrogen fluoride. Look at all that work. But we are done. That's a three-step problem. Now sometimes there's mole mass conversions all the way through it, like in this case, sometimes there's mole volume conversions to throw in there, sometimes there's mole particle conversions to go in these things too, but again, the thought process is the same. Look at what you're given and ask yourself, what can I do with that? Look at what you're trying to find and ask yourself, what do I need to get that? Odds are that'll take you right down the path you need to figure out how to do your three-step problem. In true stoichiometry problems, the middle step will be your mole ratio conversion whenever you're, you're doing a three-step problem. So once you figure it out, that, that these things become much, much easier. All right, that's it. Enjoy. I know you will.